closely watched IFO reading coming in below all of the estimates. I want to go straight to the IFO Institute president. Clemens West joins the program. Clemens, this was not a great reading for a lot of the folks who were hoping that there would be that turnaround uh, in some of the data. What happened here? Yes, it wasn't a great reading. It was a setback. Uh, during the spring, we did see some signs of life from the German economy, but those seem to be disappearing at the moment. Unfortunately, the reading is particularly bad in manufacturing, which is so important for the German economy. Uh, companies are telling us they are simply lacking orders. Uh, so the current business situation is deteriorating, and there is a lot of pessimism regarding the, co the, the coming months. And that, in turn, also impacts services, in particular, those services that are close to manufacturing, like logistics, uh, where we also have negative readings. So the uh, overall outlook is rather bleak. So what is the what are we waiting here then for for that boost? And, and Clemens, I'm going to connect it to just what we're seeing in the markets. And I don't expect you to comment on the markets, but we are seeing some real weakness in the automaker space as we talk about this market sell-off in the in, 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 that we're seeing today across the continent. And a lot of that has a read through from China. A lot of it has a read through from even weak sales coming out of the states. What do we need in that German data to really turn or to, to see the growth that we're waiting for? Uh, there, there certainly are various structural challenges that have been around for some time. So the car industry uh, is in this transition to electric mobility. There's a lot of uncertainty as to whether a value added will take place in Germany in this newly structured in industry because Germany has this comparative advantage in combustion but not in electric cars. So that does create uncertainty. Uh, but then we have uh, other factors in Germany. There, there is the, the perspective of increasing protectionism. So a lot of companies say, why should we produce in Germany if we can, if it's maybe safer to produce in the markets in the U.S. Um, uh, to some extent also in China? Uh, of course, China has its own issues. Um, the uh, workforce is declining in Germany, and there is a lot of uncertainty about uh, decarbonization and the policy surrounding it. And on top of everything else, there is an increasing regulatory burden, uh, partly coming from the EU, really. And these regulations are only now hitting the companies. And um, uh, all of that uh, keeps back investment. So that's, that's kind of the fiscal dynamics that you're seeing within Germany as well. Talk to us about how the interest rate story plays in here specifically. And you mentioned the kind of the weakness in the manufacturing sector. But when you square that with what you're seeing in the services number, which are also not looking too rosy, better than manufacturing, but again, not too rosy. How does the interest rate dynamics coming out of the ECB play into all this? So declining interest rates would help, but what we see in markets is that there was a decline in market interest rates earlier in the year, and further cuts uh, of the ECB uh, interest rate are more or less priced in, at least two further cuts at the moment. So we would get more support from that front if the ECB decided to cut its rates more quickly. What's currently priced in is a quarter of a percentage point in September and another in December. If the ECB does more, maybe as a reaction to this weak economic development, that might be a supporting factor, supporting not just manufacturing, but also construction, which is also very weak, has been weak for some time in Germany, construction in particular of apartments, of housing. So uh, if there was a push from monetary policy that that would uh, have a stabilizing effect. But is it coming? That, of course, depends on developments in the entire Eurozone, not just in Germany. Well, Clemens, then, when we talk about those developments in the Eurozone, how much of the geopolitical uncertainty may show up in these next six months based on what's going in Fran on in France, perhaps the stability in the UK helping out, what's going on in the States? Do you expect some of that sentiment to show up in the data very quickly? I think, yes, this is part of the story we see in the data. A lot of companies are worried about protectionism in the U.S. and the uncertainty surrounding the elections. Also, uncertainty surrounding U.S. commitment to guarantee security in Europe. All of this leads companies to wait with investments in Europe. At the moment, they are just considered as very risky.